Hello, I'm Bruce Goldstein with Farm Worker Justice in Washington, D.C., the National Advocacy, Litigation, and Education Organization that serves farm workers all throughout the country. Welcome to the Facebook series, The State of Farm Workers in the COVID-19 Era. Farm workers have been designated as essential workers in an essential sector, the food and agriculture sector, to protect our nation's food security during the COVID-19 pandemic. Yet their working and living conditions create grave risks to their health and economic status. These programs raise awareness about the serious challenges the, the pandemic imposes on farm workers and their family members each and every day. The series identifies impactful work and innovative ideas being carried out by farm worker justice and other organizations that represent and serve farm workers throughout the United States. I want to highlight that uh, today is the 10th uh, video that we're doing, and uh, you can watch the previous videos on the Farm Worker Justice Facebook page and also on the Farm Worker Justice YouTube channel. Um, and we have a wealth of information on our website, www.farmworkerjustice.org. So I want to welcome our guest today, Suget Lopez, who is the Executive Director of Lideres Campesinas de California. Welcome, Suget. Hi, hi, Bruce, good morning. Thank you so much for the invitation and for... Uh, we, we lost you there for a moment. Um, in, in case it was just me, uh, in case it wasn't just me, I'll let you say that again. Hi, hi, thank you, Bruce, for the invitation. I always appreciate uh, the support and the collaboration with Farm Worker Justice. And thank you for helping us elevate the work that is happening on the ground. Thank you. Oh, well, it's our honor. We've worked with uh, you and, and uh, Lira Ace Campesinos for many years, and we, we really appreciate the opportunity uh, to have you uh, work with us on this program. So, um, why don't you tell our listeners a, a little bit about the mission of Lira Ace Campesinos? Uh, why was it set up and, and uh, what are its purposes and goals? Sure, thank you. So um, Lideres Campesinas was born um, over 30 years ago in the Coachella Valley in California. Uh, our mission, our goal is to strengthen the leadership of farm worker women to be agents of social, economic and political change to ensure our human rights. And um, you know, our, our work and our mission couldn't not be more important than the era that we're living right now with this uh, pandemia of COVID-19. And so I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be able to share. Um, Lideres Campesinas is a statewide network of farm worker women and girls in California. Uh, we are a genuine community-based community organization of farm worker women. And uh, most of our staff are from farm worker backgrounds. Uh, many of them worked in the fields for more than a decade. Um, themselves and our board of directors is um, made up of uh, the farm worker women that represent the 13 different communities in California where we are organizing and mobilizing farm worker communities. Thank you. And when did you join Lideres Campesinas? I joined Lideres Campesinas almost 14 years ago. Um, I had just uh, completed my studies and, um, you know, previously I had been um, volunteering for numerous different causes, first in Mexico as I was growing up, and then later on in the U.S. when, when um, back in 1996. Um, and, and I just found, when I learned about Lideres Campesinas and its mission, I just, you know, felt immediately connected. I personally come from a farm worker family myself. My grandfather was a bracero um, and, and worked several years here in, in the U.S. prior to returning to his family in Mexico. And yeah, so that's, it's been almost 14 years. And why is there a need for a, an organization of farm worker women? So many of the women that founded Lideres Campes women that had been previously engaged in efforts to bring justice to, to the conditions, especially the working conditions of farm workers in the fields. And so um, when, when the women 
began getting together, they realized that there was a need for, for the women to have the, a space of their own to talk about and to act upon issues that pertain or that impact women and girls in particular. For example, the issue of domestic violence or sexual harassment in the workplace, um, amongst many others, uh, childcare, for example. Um, and so, you know, it, it was important then and it's important now for the women to be able to, to have that space. It's been also a place for them to heal and then together to co-empower, you know, to be able to do all the, the wonderful work that they do nowadays. And throughout Thank the you. Years. And uh, several years ago, our board of directors decided that there are some particularly vulnerable subgroups of farm workers. I mean, they're all pretty vulnerable and disadvantaged, but they, our board decided that a couple of groups are particularly disadvantaged. One of them is indigenous workers, uh, people from indigenous communities, and another is uh, farm worker women. So we've made a special effort over, over the years to um, try to meet the needs of, of farm worker women and working with Lides Campesinas is one of the main mechanisms by which we accomplish that goal. So uh, recently uh, we worked together on a training film about sexual violence uh, in agricultural workplaces called Breaking the Silence. So would you tell our listeners uh, about the, the purpose of the film, how it was done, and what its goals are? Sure. Um, so one of the issues that was early identified by our members um, was sexual harassment, sexual assault in the workplace in particular. And so the women began, I mean, back then, late 80s, early 90s, this was not an issue that was talked about. I mean, not in the way that, um, especially with the Me Too and the, you know, Time's Up era, you know, how, how often it's, it's, or more, you know, public, it, it's being uh, addressed or talked about. And so the women decided to, you know, start with, with um, conversations just amongst themselves and then slowly transition into using uh, popular education tools to bring this conversation out to more publicly with other women. Um, and a photo of and, um, and so what, what um, a, a couple of years ago, we, we in speaking with uh, Farmer for Justice um, staff, we, we thought together that it wouldn't be great to be able to transition those uh, skits that are usually performed live or the use of these illustrative novels to a different platform, in this case, video, um, that would be available, just readily available. Like if, if for whatever reason, a, a theater skit wasn't, you know, um, something that would be available live at the moment, just having this tool handy uh, to help continue these conversations. Um, and to also assist the efforts of the women nowadays to bring the reality of what's happening in the fields to a broader audience. So for example, the service providers, um, it could be agencies, federal, state, local agencies, or partners, uh, legal aid assistance agencies, or law enforcement, other, other groups that we were interested in, 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 in bringing this, this conversation of what, what women are enduring in the fields, uh, women and girls are enduring in the fields. And, and so that's you know, a little bit of how this idea came about and, and why it just made sense for, for us to partner with Farmer for Justice, given our background, our relationship, our expertises. It was a, a wonderful collaboration that included some volunteers experts on, on media and video, you know, um, graphing and um, our women helped, a, a group of, um, of our members and, and partners um, helped develop the script of, of this video, uh, provided their input and, and spent uh, countless hours uh, rehearsing and then of course, ultimately performing for what became, you know, the final product and, and even gave uh, feedback on this product. Uh, it was developed both in, in Spanish and Mixteco um, with the intention of reaching to a much broader audience. Our members um, are primarily Sp Spanish speakers, but we do work and have members who are from indigenous backgrounds as well. 
And so it was important to, to have that tool to honor, you know, that idea. Members had been expressing the need for having something like this handy, you know, and, and so this was a way to honor that as well and had provided that input of the importance of it not being just in Spanish, but also um, in Ixteco. And, and having it subtitled in English is even better because of the work that um, our organizations are doing cross industries, across industries. So, you know, um, people not speak or mix there can or, or speak some English can still benefit, you know, from this product. So, you know, right. use of not just in California, but national. So, yeah, right. that's a little bit about that project. Thank you. And I just want to tell our, our listeners that um, the, vid the, the film is, is actually very powerful and, and disturbing because it portrays an actual uh, assault, sexual assault in a California field. Um, and then goes on to, uh, to show women getting together uh, to try to uh, address the issues and prevent uh, such uh, assaults in the future. It's, it's very powerful. And if people are interested in um, using the film or developing materials to go along with it for trainings, um, you can send us an email at connect at farmworkerjustice.org and, and we'll get back to you. So now let's turn to um, what uh, the kind of the topic of the moment, COVID-19. Um, what are you and your, your staff in your offices um, uh, around the state uh, seeing and hearing about the impacts of COVID-19 on, on farm workers and, and, and particularly on the impacts on health and economic status um, and, um, and domestic violence uh, regarding uh, farm worker women? Sure. Um, unfortunately, um, from as soon as we started to learn that uh, the, you know, this health crisis was on its way and then, you know, had hit home um, here in the U.S., uh, we just immediately thought, uh, you know, what, what we normally see with other kinds of crisis, it could be the fires or an earthquake or some other natural disaster, um, is that farm worker communities are some of the communities that are the first to be impacted and also the last to be provided resource or support, you know, to, to address the, the, the challenges and the impact associated with, with these, um, um, you know, health crisis or environmental situations. And so um, our board of directors in Lideres Campesinas, uh, one of the first um, actions that was taken was first to ensure the safety and the health of the women both members and staff that are the leaders of our movement. And so we, we our organization transitioned into virtual work. Uh, we were in the middle of uh, census outreach, um, aside from all the work that we normally do to help raise awareness and work with uh, providers um, around domestic violence, sexual harassment, sexual... So, you know, moving to a virtual mode uh, online, it's been a challenge uh, given, you know, the, the, what we had in place and the technology that we have had to, to learn and that we're still in the process of developing. But um, one tool that remains um, what we use to communicate is a telephone, of course. And then we are, we're also seeing a lot of movement from farm workers sharing their testimonies of what's happening what, what impact are, are they experiencing with this uh, health crisis through connecting with us via Facebook, for example. So through these interactions, members and staff have had an opportunity to hear uh, firsthand from farm workers who are not necessarily part of our chapters. And then of course, what we're hearing internally from our membership base. So that's you know, where, where we've been able to, to gather this. And what we were able to do um, is put together a letter with eight specific areas that we were seeing common from, from all these testimonies. And this letter uh, we shared a, a month ago on April 1st uh, was sent to our governor, to his wife, and then in the state of California in general, uh, we wanted to also get this to our elected officials. And, and it's outlining situations that pertain to 
you know, how they have been excluded from the stimulus, the economic uh, stimulus that uh, our federal government has been talking about and, and the impact of that. A large number of, of farm workers are undocumented and therefore have not been eligible for, for, for these kinds of uh, stimulus or support. Um, and then of course, within the state of California, those who can apply for unemployment when they're being laid off. Um, and then, uh, you know, things that had to do with um, issues with um, uh, safety in the workplace. So, and, you know, farm workers have been reporting still to this date that, um, whereas in some places we see that there are certain, you know, social distancing in place and, and providing the basics like soap and, and water, you know, for, for them to be able to wash their hands. Other sites, a lot more sites are, are still working as usual, you know, lacking the appropriate, um, you know, social distancing and, and you know, wearing masks and, and having these essential um, items at hand, you know, to, for the safety while, while they're in the workplace. Um, other issues that pertain to childcare, you know, um, with, with, uh, with this um, situation in California, and I understand that uh, across the country, a lot of school districts children are what we're seeing. Um, couples have had to decide one of them stays home. And so, you know, less income due to that reason. Some others decide to continue to work. Some of them are single moms and they have no other choice but to go to work and perhaps delegate the responsibility of childcare to one of their teenagers, an 11 year old, 12 year old, or for those who are able to um, ask for someone, you know, a neighbor to take care of their children, they go, they leave to work concerned about how many more kids is this person taking care of and, and that may expose the children to, to um, you know, contracting the, the virus, for example. There's just um, uh, various issues, but one definitely that is a particularly concern for us is what's happening in regards to vi violence, domestic violence. Um, in some areas, we are hearing directly from the women who contact our victim advocates um, and, and asking for, for referrals to shelters. And unfortunately, what we're seeing is that the shelters are, are either maxed out in capacity and then, um, or they have certain, you know, rules, procedures in place to, to prevent infection from spreading in, in their shelters with the families that were already placed there. And so, you know, many of these women are, are challenged and, and perhaps faced with the decision of having to go back, you know, to, to the household and, and continue to endure the situation that, that they're experiencing. In other counties, we're seeing that women are kept silent. Um, but we know that in a few more weeks, not, not, not far from now, this situation is, is, is going to escalate. We're actually seeing some of that escalation happening right now. Uh, unfortunately, we have a couple of cases at this moment that uh, where the women have had to defend themselves. And now they're the ones who are being put as the perpetrator and, and the person that has caused harm for, for so long, for many years in some cases, is now the victim. And so providing, making sure that the women have access to legal assistance in those cases. Um, one of them, for instance, is uh, perhaps facing a potential deportation as a result of this situation of her being in the situation of defending herself. And, and so we're, we're Lideres Campesinas is, is connecting this women to, to our um, you know, legal aid and, and following through with them. With sexual harassment, what we're understanding is that women who had prior to COVID-19 filed cases with and that they're given for being laid off is that it's due to the crisis. You know, that because of COVID-19, the employer is no longer able to, to provide um, uh, you know, employment, and so they're being let go. But what we're learning is that it's only that person who's being let go. In some places, it's the peak of the season, you know, for like strawberry, 
you know, the strawberry season. And, and right now is when, when these workers are needed the most, being such a delicate product and, and the possibility of, of processing these strawberries and not just necessarily, you know, the, the market is still there for that and, and how they're being let go. I mean, we're seeing that pattern happening in, in the Central Coast, for example. So, some, so these are some of the concerns that we're seeing with COVID-19. Thank you. And, and um, the, uh, the broken immigration system that has led to the fact that, at least at the national level, uh, more than half of the farm workers are undocumented immigrants, uh, just means that they're, these farm workers are under even greater pressure uh, uh, to speak up about domestic violence, about sexual harassment in the workplace, about not being paid, about being retaliated against for raising issues. Uh, so um, the, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, is on top of a lot of uh, great difficulties that farm workers are, are living under already. Um, did you, um, now in California, the state government has uh, been more responsive um, to uh, low wage immigrant workers than uh, most other states and certainly than uh, uh, the federal government has. So um, have there been some improvements as a result of your letter to the governor? We like to think that the efforts that Lideres Campesinas has um, undertaken, along with multiple, multiple other organizations that are doing wonderful work uh, to elevate and to um, advocate for what's needed. Um, you, know, uh, you know, we have joined in um, our, our letter was signed on by multiple uh, stakeholders uh, from California, local, from the nation, and we are very grateful for that. And, and Lideres Campesinas has also uh, done similar work in support of efforts of other, other partners who are helping to elevate the need around rent, you know, um, you know not being able to pay the next month's rent and, and the consequences of that. Um, for example, also around um, issues that pertain to the um, I'm sorry, Suget, uh, you, you, uh, we lost your audio there for a second. You were saying, especially around issues that pertain to? Especially on issues that uh, pertain to um, rent. Sorry, let me. The issues that pertain to rent and also um, um, the safety of the workers in, in, in while they're, whether it's in a packing plant, in a dairy, or um, in the fields. What we're seeing is a development of, of coalitions throughout the different counties of multiple stakeholders that include uh, elected officials, uh, county employees from various departments, the uh, ag commissioner, um, uh, we're, uh, growers, you know, associations of growers or representatives of, of different growers in the different counties, and then advocate grassroots organizations coming together and, and, and talking, you know, about the challenges that farm workers are, are facing in the workplace and in other, other situations and um, proposing ideas together and, and actually taking action. Um, we're, we're seeing that movement, you know, in different, in different counties. And I hope that, um, you know, soon that effort can be replicated um, in other areas where, you know, there's still a lot to be done but, uh, statewide, but there is, there, there has been a, an impact of the work that Lideres Campesinas and, and other groups, many other groups are doing here. I think that it's definitely having, having a great impact in the state overall. And, and uh, uh, Farm Worker Justice and Lideres Campesinas uh, uh, alike uh, work in coalition with many other organizations, often help create coalitions to bring uh, greater influence on, uh, for the benefit of farm workers. So we've been privileged to work with you on a range of issues around pesticide safety, around immigration reform. And we continue to, uh, to work on all those issues. Um, I wanted to mention uh, or, or have you uh, discussed the effort at masks, um, uh, face masks for farm workers. Um, uh, 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 
a friend of our organization contacted us and said that uh, she and, and a group of other people, mostly women, I might add, um, uh, were producing fairly large quantities of masks uh, for working people as essential workers. And uh, if we knew of farm worker organizations that uh, could use those masks, they'd be willing to donate them to them and send them to them. Uh, so Lidais Campesinas was uh, one of the groups um, that we contacted. And um, uh, my understanding is that we've now facilitated the, uh, the sending of 1,700 masks to a couple of different organizations and Lidais is one of them. That's right, that's right. It, thank you, thank you, Bruce, for, for um, addressing that need as well. Um, and, and speaking to this, this um, other example of our partnership with Farmer Co Justice. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, we have uh, received um, from different, um, you know, places, uh, some of them from elected officials, some of them from from individuals within within the community, uh, some others from other partner sister organizations, partner organizations that uh, have contacted us with with the idea for with some is to produce the masks. So our, like our, our members are taking on that task uh, coming up soon, very soon, of uh, producing masks for distribution um, locally, and then um, and then these donations that have come through through these um, you know uh, example that you just uh, mentioned um, and 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 we have slowly began to uh, as we have been receiving these or or rather quickly began the distribution of these in some counties uh, with the creation of these coalitions that are you know addressing the concerns that have arisen regarding the the worker sa safety um, and other challenges. Uh, there's been hubs that have been created to facilitate because we have this challenge of, of staying home safe, of being able to go out in person to deliver this. Um, like I have shared earlier, Lideres Campesinas had decided to um, adopt mid-March this uh, stay home um, policy for the safety of our women, many of who lack health insurance or um, have the means to 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 pay for out-of-pocket expenses associated with healthcare. It could be the medicine or or copays or whatever. So we're unable to go out directly in the fields. However, the our members who are still working in the fields or who have relatives who are working in the fields could be the the spouse or a son or daughter. Are through them is that we're able to um, get these masks out effectively to where they're most needed. Um, yeah, so it's, it's it, again, I have said, we have been seeing how people in other industry had been receiving uh, focus and I so get we've uh, lost your audio there for a second. Uh, hopefully you're back now. Go ahead. So we, we, we have began seeing how there was an emphasis on the mass distribution for on the healthcare workers and, and grocery workers, for example, uh, restaurant workers. But slowly, we, we've been able to contribute for these masks to also get to the, to the hands of the farm workers, so um, ag workers. So we're, we're very grateful for, for having the opportunity to contribute and for you know, the collaboration that has made this possible. Yeah, glad to do it. And, and I want to say to our uh, listeners, for those who are involved in making fairly large quantities of masks, um, uh, there are some other farm worker organizations who, who we asked, would, would they like some masks? We thought they were going to say, yeah, I'll take 20, I'll take 40. But you know, they're saying, oh, we'll take 200, we'll take 500, we'll take as many as you can give us. So if there are um, groups of people who uh, have masks uh, in fairly significant quantities, um, we'd be uh, interested in facilitating the, the sending of those masks to some other farm worker groups as well. So you can, again, you can email us at connect at farmworkerjustice.org if, if you're producing masks. Um, so before we, we wrap up, um, let me just say that uh, I, I really appreciate 
uh, you joining us today, uh, Suget, uh, for our Facebook series on the state of farm workers in the COVID-19 era. Uh, we've, this is uh, our 10th uh, uh, program. Uh, we've done one each day uh, these two weeks uh, to bring attention to the essential workers who are producing our food and the special challenges that they're facing. And unfortunately, the, the, the gaps in, um, in protections that too many employers uh, are, are uh, imposing on farm workers and the gaps in policies that uh, our federal government, especially many state governments, uh, are imposing on farm workers in, around occupational safety and health. Uh, we, will, we do post these uh, videos uh, shortly after they're completed every day. Um, on uh, Monday, we are set to uh, interview a leader of a major health foundation based in California. And on Wednesday, Next week, we will be interviewing the leader of uh, Oregon's Farm Worker Union, and we have uh, some other interviewees that are, are being finalized. I wanted to say to our listeners also is that uh, the work that we do with Blue Days County Seen Us and, and other organizations and farm workers around the country cannot be done uh, without your support. Uh, Blue Days County Seen Us to California and other groups, they don't have money to pay for the services that we provide. Uh, we depend on uh, generous donors for our work. So we hope that you will make a donation to Farmworker Justice. You can do that at our website, www.farmworkerjustice.org support. You can also mail the donation to our Washington DC address. And I should mention that a generous donor has said, uh, that we will receive $30,000 if we receive $30,000 from other donors. So help us uh, reach that match. We also have a wealth of information uh, on our website, including a dedicated page on COVID-19 for uh, healthcare providers, for farm workers themselves, and, and for the public. Uh, so uh, Suget Lopez, Executive Director of Lides Campesinas de California, the statewide farm worker women's organization in California. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Thanks again for all the work you do and, and for the opportunity to collaborate with you. Thank you, Bruce, likewise. And I just finally would like to um, call on for, for action today, May 1st. We are calling on um, uh, our federal uh, agencies that are responsible for the protection, the health and safety of the workers, of all workers in, in the U.S., and in this case, um, OSHA and the Department of Labor. Um, if you go to our Facebook page, our website, you will see opportunities to, uh, to do that. Uh, we're joining in with our sisters from the National Alianza Nacional de Campesinas on an effort to, to call, call for um, the community to, to call for, for action and response from, from these two entities. So uh, more information can be found through our website and, and through our Facebook page at Lideres Campesinas. And thank you, Bruce. Thank you all. Our pleasure. Thank you. See you next time.